Hello, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to another Ren 11 Live with me, Sean. I hope you are all well. I hope you all have a beverage to hand tonight. My beverage is Thirsty Farmer, a cider from Nottinghamshire. Okay. Um, apparently, it's won an award for great tasting, so I'm going to have that. Uh, you also notice I'm wearing my Ren 11 t shirt. If you haven't had one yet or you haven't bought one, why? Why? You know. Bad show, only kidding. But if you do want one, it's available on the website up the front of uh, my bio. Anyway, uh, it is great to see everyone here. Good to see some hand waves and everyone uh, joining. Tonight, we have the wonderful Brock Keane, uh, a dude who has probably one of the coolest dailies going because that car gets driven everywhere. It's a wonderful 996 C4S, um, but we'll leave him to tell you more about the vehicle. So what I'm about to do is get him in. There we go, he's waving at me. So I will go live with him now. And you should accept us very, very soon. By the way, whilst we're waiting to connect, oh, he's here. Hey Brock, how you doing? Good, Sean, how are you? Not too bad, man. Not too bad at all. Thank you so much for joining us. You bet, man. I'm um, from my, from my to... driveway in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> oh, man. It's a beautiful looking driveway because all I see <laughs> is that sky high tent um, yeah, and, yeah. and that wonderful yeah, view uh, of, of trees. <laughs> Gorgeous, man. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, all I've got to show you is a bedroom. So, uh, do oh, okay. <laughs> um, I was, oh, good man. What have you got with you today? Uh, so today is a Hop Valley Brewing Divine Shine. It's a hazy blonde ale. Nice. Pretty tasty stuff. And a little bit of OJ to go with it. Well, cheers, my friend. Cheers. Mm. Hello, someone who's joining me with a drink on this, because no one has yet. Everyone's either had a, a mug with nothing. So at least there's another pisshead here to, uh, to enjoy time with. Right on. <laughs> I was uh, just going to tell everyone that um, although we're going to be talking for the start, everyone has an opportunity to ask you questions um, cool. during this time. So what we'll do later on um, is answer that, get you to answer those questions. Um, so something to bear in mind, folks, make sure you are uh, writing those questions in the comments below and we'll do our best to get through them. Um, but Brooke, you are... Well, your page has blown up in the less than two years, 18 months that it's been on. Um, Probably about 18 months, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's mad to see. You know, I've seen the growth, especially in the last year. And, yeah, uh, it's been totally wild. Totally yeah. wild. So, so, you know, everyone knows who does follow you. You have a 996 C4S with a tent on the top. I do. Uh, I... <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a crazy thing. I, I have to admit, I didn't plan it. Um, it wasn't something like, oh, I'm going to put this on my 911 and go camping with it. Uh, we, did, we did buy the 996 um, to replace an S4. So it was like all-wheel drive. It was intended to be the car that I take to the mountain to go skiing and things like that. Um, okay. But the, the tent was a little bit of a... A happy, a happy accident, we'll call it that. Mm -hmm. uh, basically what happened, I mean, I, I think a few people probably know the story, but I'll give you guys the, the short version. Um, my wife and I are really big backpackers. We love camping. We love the outdoors. I live in the Pacific Northwest, which is like the northwest corner of the U.S. And um, I'd always, I mean, straight up, I've always badmouthed rooftop tents. Like, it was never something that I wanted. I'm like, oh, these guys are crazy with these rooftop tents. They're you know, waste of time. They take forever. They're big and bulky and blah, blah, blah. I, I badmouth them nonstop. But um, we have this outfitter here in the U.S. called REI. And they do these things called garage sales. And basically, it's everything that somebody returns um, throughout the year. They do this huge garage sale and everything's marked down like 70% off. And uh, but the problem is you've got to get there early because the lines wrap around the, the stores. So we got there around 6 a.m., set up our camp chairs, actually the one I'm sitting in right now, and um, waited for it to open. And in the meantime, I'm kind of like walking around the parking lot because they've got it blocked off, looking at things. And sure enough, there's a couple of rooftop tents sitting in the corner. And I'm like, eh, maybe I could flip it and make some cash, right? Uh, because it's a 
super popular thing here and i don't know what it is for you guys but rooftop tents are on tons and tons of vehicles here in the pacific northwest so anyway i was looking at it more of a business decision how to make a little extra cash maybe pay for a set of tires and um got in there saw it was ridiculously low priced and the receipt the return receipt on it said uh the reason for return was it smells funny and I, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. So people can return anything for whatever reasons. And I'm thinking, okay, they probably just didn't open it up and air it out. Because if you're camp or if you've ever been camping and you open up a brand new tent, or even an old tent for that matter, it's going to smell a little funky. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I convinced my wife. I'm like, hey, we got to buy this. I promise maybe if the worst case scenario is we'll rent it out, you know, because people do that here. Mm. So I bought it. And uh, the guy who didn't want a rooftop tent bought a rooftop tent. And then I decided, oh, I've got, a, I've got a Range Rover Classic. So that was kind of the idea. And that's what we drove to the, the garage sale. So I was going to throw it on the top of the, ro- the Classic. And I made the attempt and I found out that the hardware on the tent didn't work with the roof rack and roof system on the Classic. And that kind of left me in a bind because they don't want stuff left around. And the only other car I have uh, is the 911, but it does have a roof rack on it. So I thought, hey, I'm just going to go and throw the tent on the roof rack and hopefully it doesn't crush my roof or break my roof rack or go flying off on the freeway on the way home. And, uh, I got home. My wife was still at the house. I convinced her. I'm like, Hey, listen, you got to check this out really quick. Climb up here with, and I opened it up on the Porsche. I climbed up there and, or she climbed up there and I, and then I went and got our dog, Lucy. Yeah. I talked Lucy up there too. And she was sold. She's like, this is the greatest thing ever. This is amazing. <laughs> The rest is history. It's pretty much stayed on the 911 for the past 18 months. That is, yeah, because every time I see a picture of it, it's always there. And I think, has he taken loads and loads of photos during the times? But you actually no. daily it with the roof rack, with the I daily, sky I daily it with the racks always on it. Um, the, there's different accessories on it all the time, depending on what I'm doing. Hmm. Um, this morning, actually, I went out with a group of uh, Porsche guys on a drive, and it was I was rocking. The, there's a rooftop box that I put on it. And um, so that was on there because I'm actually going to have it color matched to the car because I thought it'd be fun. So I've got to go down to the uh, the body shop to have that done. And I had to get the tent off to do that. But then you hit me up this morning. You're like, hey, is there any chance we can put the tent on uh, and have it opened up for our, our live here? And sure enough, I, my, I convinced my neighbor across the street to come over and throw the roof tent on it with me and there it is. Oh, you star. So it's anyway, amazing. That's how it all happened. That, it, it's an incredible story. And, and it's amazing how, how, how chance kind of leads us into situations and opportunities. And, you, yeah. you, you know, you've, you've grabbed a lot of people's attention, you know, because of it as well. Don't get me wrong. Lucy, she is a, yeah. uh, she's a screen stealer, man. You know, what a, yeah. a golden doodle. Yeah golden doodle yeah i gotta look at her time she gets a big head and gets yeah (laughs) oh proper diva you can tell the way she poses she knows what she's doing um (laughs) but but you know you've garnered so much attention why do you think people have have followed you and your 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 adventures within the uh with your car you see what's going on behind me there's a cat on my car and i have no idea what's going on (laughs) hey um yeah, they got a lot of love weird, though. <laughs> weird things happen around here, man. So I, you know, I'm on my drive back from REI, getting the tent. Um, there were definitely some funny looks, and I got a lot of like the what the fuck kind of attitude from people. So to me, I think it's just like what is on your roof. First of all, most people don't recognize a Porsche with anything on the roof, True. Um, let alone a big box looking thing, and that generates a lot of attention. And like, what is that? And why do you have it up there? And then when I tell people it's a tent, they're like, oh, my gosh, like, can I see it? And then, I, you know, here comes the pictures and that kind of stuff, because I don't just always open it up in the, in the parking lot. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I think it's just something different. And I, I have to tell you, man, the people who put rooftop tents on their SUVs and way up high are out of their minds. The best I, I, they'll call me crazy for that. But I got to tell you, that's. Lower to the ground is so much better because in the evening when you got to take a piss in the middle of the night, it's way easier to get out. <laughs> yeah, um, I can imagine. Yeah, Especially if you're, uh, you've are you had a few as well and you don't want to like, yeah, just fall oh, out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's a little less dangerous the lower to the ground you get. 
True. But, it, you know, it's nice on the rover. If we do some really, like, actual overlanding, we'll take the Range Rover and throw the tent up there. But for the most part, it just stays on the 911, and, and we love it. And that's the thing. You know, you take, you drive your car, you beat on that 911. You I know, I've seen it. On the 911. Oh, it, it's snow, yeah. beaches, off the beaten track, you know, <laughs> whenever you're driving. Yeah, there's some road, but then most of the time you're in amongst the, the forest. And you yeah. really do go for it, man. And it's just like so cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, have you had to do anything to the 911 to get it to be able to work? No. I know the amazing. answer to this. I, yeah. It's, I, everybody, I mean, you would assume that I would have to. And, and yeah, exactly. Mind blown. But leave it to Porsche and, and uh, to over engineer things. Um, the roof racks have been rated to 600 pounds static weight, which is like 200 pounds over what we put in it. And the dynamic weight on the roof is 165 pounds. So it was like 75 kilograms, something like that. Um, so it, it really doesn't have any modifications. Ironically, when I got the car, I did put uh, H&R Sport Springs on it. And so it sits about an inch lower, um, which can be a little bit challenging on some of the places that I take it. But at the same time, it just... I mean, as much as I would like to do what, like, Lee Keen is doing with his, you know, Safari Porsches and things like that, I really enjoy the practicality of what I've got right now. Hmm. Um, it's just easy on. It's great on the road. It's slow off the road. But I'm not, like, looking to go rally in this car right now. No, I hear you. Uh, even though you do drive hard, you don't, you're not soft. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, um, I've smacked the oil pan and I, it's, it's going up on the lift here next week um, for a couple little tweaks and things. And I can't wait to see all the scratches and dings and dents on, on the bottom from, from who knows what I've run over. <laughs> True. Well, you know, it happens, you know, you, you, you're very close where you live, are you based in, in, in Oregon or are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Portland, Oregon. So I'm based Portland. in the northwest corner of Oregon. Uh, Got you. Because about three I, hours south of Seattle. Okay. I've, uh, I've got a list of places, you know, you've been to. So you've done Larch Mountain, North Plains, Mount Hood, Cape Mears, done Jackson. <laughs> uh, I, I do my research, man. I've got to do due diligence. Yeah, you do, here. man. You really, you really did. I know you've uh, done I've, California um, and you've done the views over the Pacific highway which looked amazing yeah, you know that's magic right. man yeah you know i this year um uh, due to our little global situation that we've got going on a lot of my plans have gotten um redirected i was supposed to be in europe here next month for seven to eight weeks doing like an eight thousand mile loop um with this what? car and the tent so i was kind of bummed when that got canceled oh man <laughs> i'm i'm um, heartbroken for you yeah, and then um, that got kind of redirected to doing um, the Formula E in New York here in July, but I highly doubt that's going to happen, unfortunately. No, and no, then no. Um, Pebble Beach just got canceled, so no more Pebble Beach. No more Porsche Parade this year got canceled and in uh, Palm Springs. Um, em Rod Emery's Porsche Camp Out got, got canceled this year, so... All of a sudden, my schedule has gotten very, very open, and now I'm looking to do, you know, solo camping trips, maybe pick up a couple other drivers, um, throw roof tents on their Porsches, and we're going to, you know, go hit up the Pacific Northwest a little bit more. Well, you, you were fortunate enough to have a really cool guest uh, last year with uh, Sam from Seen Through Glass and his uh, oh, 917. He's the, he's, he is the best, and we had so much fun doing that whole day of driving. Uh, one of the best, one of the best times I've ever had with with someone. It it was uh, it was pretty cool to see. I remember when I saw the picture first. I was like, "Hang about, that's that, that's a UK plate. It's either yeah. you've, you've driven a long bloody way, or someone's come a long bloody way to see you." And I was, it was, right. it was incredible. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. Like when he hit me up, I'm like, "Wait, what? You're coming?" Through? I mean, I had a hunch he'd have to come through Oregon, but I didn't know he'd take the scenic route, and uh, I should have known better. <laughs> but um, yeah, when he hit me up, I'm like anything you need, man, let me know where you want to go and let's let's go set up camp somewhere and, and talk about cars. Yeah, and that's the cool thing, isn't it? It's you've got the two bases covered. You have the cool, you know, it's a cool car to have and, and car people are always and everyone says the C4S is like the jewel of uh, the 996 era, you know, wide body, 
Um, yeah. You know, nice reflective strip on the back. Um, it, it's 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 a really well put, to, like you say, over engineered car in a lot of ways. And then you've it got the the car. freedom of the camping ability with the the sky high tent. And and you just know, by the way, I've already done my due diligence and research, and to, I've already priced myself one um, and a roof rack. So uh, yeah, I I don't know how I'm going to hide that from from my other half, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll do my best. Um, so are you guys, but, is, uh, is Yakima, do they, is the Yakima EU available to you guys? No, I'd have to purchase it uh, online and uh, have it imported over. So, uh, okay. well, we, we can talk offline about that. Maybe I can help facilitate a little bit. Okay. Cause I've, I've got some ideas already about it. And, uh, I think as a, as a method of, of, well, accommodation, you couldn't really beat it when everyone else is glamping as such or staying in a hotel whilst we go for a drive. I kind yeah, of want to try something else. It's really fun. And uh, I tell you, we, I did uh, Marin Sport Reunion here. I guess it's been, it's coming up on two years now. Yeah. Um, we went down, camped the track, camped in Pebble Beach. I mean, it, it was epic, absolutely yeah. epic. And, you know, I've got all these guys that are like, oh, my gosh, I got to do that. That's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. How, do you, how does that work? You know, there's so many questions about it. And it is, it's so easy to go out. Like, we did a camp rally I want to say it was last September and it was all sports cars. Um, buddy of mine, Cliff Brunk, he had a, he's got a G body 911. We put a roof tent on his car. Um, and we just, yeah, we just hit a bunch of like back forest roads out by Mount St. Helens, Mount hood, Mount Adams and, um, camped in sports cars. And let me tell you, it is people, if you're not doing that, man, you're missing out. It is a, it is a great combination of things. Yeah, and I think I think that element of uh, it's it's real pure freedom. You know, you've got the speed element attached to it, and then you've got this ability to just go, yeah, we're here, done, stuff it, let's get the beer out, we'll put the tent up. And how long does it take to put the tent up? Out of curiosity. Um, about three and a half minutes. <sighs> <laughs> it's yeah. I I put people ask me that question nonstop, and I uh, I finally I'm like, you know, I've never actually timed it. And I always tell people under 10 minutes. And um, so what happened, I'm like, okay, I was set it up here in, in the driveway. I did that. I filmed it. And it was like three minutes, 36 seconds. And I'm like, holy cow, that's crazy. I mean, that doesn't include me throwing some like extra bedding in there, but that's faster than any ground tent I've ever owned. Hmm. Uh, for, well, yeah, I mean, that would be great. Um, I, I've been camping a few times, uh, mostly to music festivals. And we're fortunate uh, at some of these festivals that we go to. You, you can actually park next to your tent and, and, and be there. So yeah. this is perfect for that. And yeah, I'm, the only thing that he I'm hesitating about is my, my 996 is low, quite, quite considerably Experience. low. It's lower than a GT3. And, and it's the two-wheel drive part, I'm not too bothered about. You, we had this conversation last year about that. You were like, don't worry, it's fine. You, you can oh, yeah. This. I actually I disconnected my front drive here last week, so now I've got a rear wheel drive C4S at, at the current time, which is really fun. Uh, I can imagine. I was it was, awesome. it was sending me into fits this morning on our drive. The roads were still a little cold, the tires were a little bit cold, and uh, I was like, "Oh yeah, I keep forgetting this is now rear wheel drive." <laughs> <laughs> it was, but good fun, good fun. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, with regards to. Um, preparation for, for for travel so what guide us through what you have to ensure you have before you actually set off and, and go on these excursions so how long do they normally last you, your trips away uh, you know it's it's a little it's a little all over the place um i mean i can if it's just me and i mean maybe lucy and i i can be out for five days no problem and that's water and everything like i don't need a water supply um, I'm a little stinky when I come back. My wife's not stoked about that. But <laughs> for the most part, like five days is very doable for me. Um, and that's no like facilities, no, none of that kind of stuff. Um, obviously trying to find fuel is always a thing, but I'm, I'm not going like deep into the woods. Um, most of my stuff, you know, I'm within 50 miles of a service station. Uh, but really, you know, it's obviously water. That's my number one thing. Um, because it's how I, if I'm going out for a long period of time, uh, I love people are gonna think I'm nuts, but I love freeze dried food. I'm a camper at heart, man. I love to backpack. And so 
I boil my water in a, what they call a jet boil, which is basically just a rapid boil little camp stove and pour, pour that boiling water into my, uh, my mountain house freeze dried food and have myself some chili Mac or whatever I'm going to have. Um, so that's if it's just, if it's just me. Now, if my wife's coming with me, we switch it up a little bit. Uh, I have this amazing collapsible grill from this company called snow peak. Um, if you haven't looked, if you don't know about snow peak, you guys got to look them up. They have some of the most amazing titanium camp gear you could ever imagine. It's, it's ep epic stuff. Anyway, I got this great little camper. It folds flat. Um, I can put it in the rooftop tent when I fold it up. Yeah. And that's how we grill. And I mean, we can do gourmet meals. Um, actually, I'm going to do a little self plug here. If you guys follow my Land Rover account, RRC Road Trip, um, I just was out at our cabin and we made pizza on this um, camp stove, like wood fired pizza. Your face says it all. I mean, it's. <laughs> I'm it a was, pizza freak, man. I'm already like. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's. It's absolutely incredible. Um, and you get wood fired kind of smoky pizza, however you want it. You just throw it on the grill, let it do its thing. It takes about, about maybe a minute and a half, three minutes. And it's good to go. So, you know, we can do like the, the, the backpacking camping stuff, where it's like ultra light, you know, as little as possible, but then we can also glamp it up a little bit and, you know, grill steaks or make wood fired pizza or whatever it might be. Um, so yeah, it's not really as crazy minimalist as people think. Yeah, okay. It, it doesn't seem that. Camp... No, it's just a couple camp chairs, uh, some blankets, the grills, water, and you're good to go. Like people are like, how do you fit it all in the 911? Well, one, you know these things actually have an enormous amount of space. Huge. Um, you know, the back seats yeah. fold down if you need to. The, the front yep. is carnivorous. You know, you've got so much space. You oh, yeah. store everything in there, you know. No, it's, it's excellent. So it's got plenty of room for everything that we need. I mean, whether it be me alone, me and the dog, me and my wife and the dog, like we're, we're good to go for three, four days, no problem. That's incredible. Um, and you also got, as you say, uh, your own cabin as well so that you can, you can travel to. Yeah, and that one, um, right now we've got, we've got a, a place on the Oregon coast, which is pretty fun. Um, and then we've got a, a cabin down in the Sierra Nevadas uh, in California. And fortunately, we were able to acquire another cabin in the Oregon mountains here. Um, should, be, should be in the books here of the 8th of next month. So I'm pretty stoked on that. That's wicked, man. That's so cool. Would you um, do us a favor and could you show us around the, the east wing and the west wing of the tent just to get an yeah, idea of yeah, size absolutely. and whatnot? Yeah, come totally. on, man. Absolutely. All right, so you're even sitting on the floor. Bless you, man. Oh well, kind well of actually, on the, on it's just a little. It's just a little camp chair. I'm not, yeah, I'm not quite chair. on the floor. That's so, hi guys, this is the 996. Everybody's ever probably already seen this. Um, it's a little funky doing it this way. I did set it up for you guys so you can get an idea of what it looks like live. That's brilliant. Um, but it's, not... it's a it's this it's a medium sized tent. Oh, so you went it's... for the medium because when, yeah, I, when I, I clicked did... on my car, it said. I can only fit a small one in there. It didn't give me the option for a medium. Interesting. We got we got to fix that. I'll hit Yakima up and let him know because it's there's actually like there's nine nine six and then there's like Carrera as an option for their fit their fit tool, and okay. um, one of those says one thing, well, the other one says the other. But yeah, this is a medium. You can totally go with the medium. Um, not an issue at all. Basically, anything that's under one hundred and twenty five pounds, you're pretty good to go with. Okay. That's so cool. yeah, I mean, it's, there's not a lot to it. It's pretty, pretty basic. We throw some string lights up. I don't know if you guys can see those up there. They're like little <laughs> wires. Yeah, yeah, you can see them there. Yeah. Uh, for some ambiance, and then they've got little pockets, you know, so you can throw stuff in when you're camping. That's brilliant. Um, and then of course, you know, all the different windows which have bug guards on them, so you can open them up and keep the bugs out as well. Perfect. Yeah. But, that's awesome. Uh, uh, and does it take just you can do it by yourself open it oh up yeah everything. yeah it it, it, it doesn't take me i mean really it's such an easy thing to open up that's incredible. um yeah that's it's wonderful great, it's, it's a really great setup man that's a good and good this, size actually, what's that it's a good size it really is yeah it's a great size i mean yeah. you could go with a small and be totally okay 
um, if it's just one or two people. But since Lucy's like 50 pounds, she likes to be up there with us. Three people make it work. Uh, the three person does. I mean, and you can also deploy it. I mean, I've got it set up so it deploys off the side of the car. Hmm. But you can also set it up so it deploys off the back of the car, um, which is kind of a cool, which is kind of a cool setup too. I mean, it just it kind of depends on what you want to do and how you want it to look and things like that. In case you have an argument, you can at least get into the car on one side and and scare the crap out of yeah. someone. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's exactly the truth, man. Awesome, man. That's brilliant. It's it's incredible to. To, to see how how easy it is for someone else to any this is open to anyone this is something that's pretty much off the shelf that anyone can off buy the and they can fit into most cars it's not just the Porsche, yeah. is it? oh definitely not in fact it, if you look on uh yakima's website just yakimaracks.com they have a fit tool that you can just plug your car into mm -hmm. and it'll tell you what works on your car. And if for some reason you find that it, like it doesn't show your car doesn't show up, that doesn't mean it hasn't doesn't work on your car. It just means that they haven't tested it on your car. Uh, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. I mean, with me driving a, a 911, they're like, they actually, they're 10 miles from my house. They're like, please let, please come in so we can test this because if a roof tent flies off your Porsche, we're going to, be famous for all the wrong reasons uh, so that's true so that's kind of how that's kind of how the 911 came about with them out of curiosity how fast you know obviously you've never done it because you're a law-abiding citizen uh, but how fast have you managed to to go with that tent on the roof obviously not open because oh. that would just scare the the shit out of, yeah. the, out of lucy but you know um you know open i can i can barely move around with it <laughs> uh, which we've done though like i'm just too lazy like oh I, you know i don't like where the car is sitting or it needs to be like leveled out that's one thing people don't take into consideration is you actually have to find a level spot to park mm. because if you don't then you're going to be leaning one way or the other and, it, and that can be a little bit of challenging but anyway so sure. you know i'll have my wife like hold the ladder up and then i'll drive it like slowly but when it's closed up um i've had it to about 115 Jesus, um, there must be some so, sort of road noise going on at that point, but still, you know, 115 is amazing. It didn't feel like at all. I've actually, I, and I've had it. So we went down, a buddy of mine, um, Brandon Haley. If you guys, a lot of my photos, Brandon takes. So it's not all me in that, in that thing. Um, but Brandon and I went down to a decommissioned NASA landing site uh, last September, I think it was. And the, the runway is almost two miles long and about 700 feet wide. So we were able to like really, really push the car and kind of see what would happen. Hence the 115 miles an hour. That's where I felt comfortable with. Um, but we were also able to like to understand the, the dynamic stability of the roof tent. We had this or I had it up on three wheels um, in the corner. So it's still there. Incredible. Yeah. No, no stress on it. I mean, no, I'm sure there's no, there was stress on it, but no undue stress. Uh, I suppose, um, you know, the car having a naturally low center of gravity kind of alleviates some of that pressure that you add when you put 120 pounds worth of tent on the roof and such. So. Yeah. I'm sure there's an engineer out there that would, could calculate how much weight I moved down by lowering the car three quarters of an inch. True. Um, but it probably is around that hundred pound limit. So it hasn't really changed the handling dynamics of the car very much. That's incredible. You really could, you know, when people say about the, the, the dilemma of, you know, buy a race car or buy a house and everyone says, you know, you can't live in your race car. Well, you can. So you can't live in your race car, but you can live on your race car. Oh, even better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you need to give that to Yakima, man, and get them like on board with that. You can't live in it. You can live on it. You live know? on it. Yeah, yeah. That's it, man. Wicked, bro. Thank you. Okay. What we're going to do now is go to some Q&A questions. And uh, cool. we've got a few here. Let's see the first two that come to this. Okay, so, okay, Casper H asks, and it's on the screen now, does Brock have a background in photography? Because most of his images look really <laughs> nice. But we kind of already got the answer for that. But uh, here's a free yeah. plug for Fred. Um, I would say it's 
it is a hobby of mine. There's no real photography in it. Um, you know, I, I shoot when I'm shooting my photography and there is some, uh, I would say probably 50% of the stuff that shows up on my feed is mine. Um, or I'm behind the camera, but, uh, I, I shoot with a Sony a 6,000. It's nothing spectacular. And then my iPhone X or 10 or whatever they call them. Um, so I don't, and, and I've kind of taught myself a little bit of Photoshop so I can get rid of certain things that I don't like that are in the photo. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, um, B Haley image, the guy is always around shooting and loves to shoot the 911. So I'm happy with that. Uh, another good friend of mine, Connor, today. Um, also, he gets out there and he shoots with me, and so that's really where a lot of that stuff comes from. Yeah, it's uh, it's love fantastic. Love working with other well. photographers because it also gives me the opportunity to learn a little bit. Yeah, of course. You know, it, you kind of put the pressure on yourself to to learn something new as well, and that's so well done. We've got another question from. Let's see. Oh, we've got a few now. Um, how long does it take? This is from Day AA, Lee Driven. How long does it take for you to set up the tent each time you use it? We've already answered that. That was the three and a half minutes. Yeah, about three and a half minutes. It doesn't take. It doesn't really take that long. Um, breakdown is probably more around the ten minute time frame. If I just take my time, it, okay. it's a little bit more challenging. Oh, you guys, guess who's here? Come oh, on. hello, Lucy. Oh, she's <laughs> beautiful. Um. She's hello <laughs> so uh about 10 about 10 minutes um is about how long it takes me the the cover on it takes a little bit longer than most because it's got velcro and zippers and things like that uh, otherwise okay. pretty easy that's, that's it's interesting so longer to take down than to put up but still 10 minutes is nothing when you consider you know you don't you save the biggest amount of of stress by then loading it onto something because it's already loaded it's there right so much easier okay um shine hussein asks money no bar what car currently on sale would you swap your 996 for I, that's tough um it's really currently on sale that i would swap my 996 for <laughs> i don't know mm. uh i i really in the the that's honest answer is there isn't a lot out there that I want right now. Um, I mean, I love the new, I, I mean, if we're going to go that route, I love the new Bentley CGTs. Uh, I think that's a, the Continental GTs are so epic. Um, but I don't know if I would really want to swap the 996 for it. If I could drill some holes in the roof, probably. <laughs> uh, I've talked about that with a buddy of mine. So, you know, I, on, and, and people think that that's crazy, but I love the 996 because it's this unique transition period for Porsche where they went from something they've been doing for, you know, 40 years or however many years it was. Yeah, I think 40-ish years uh, to going all of a sudden to a fully new design, water cooling. But the 996 still has a little bit of that early 911 feel. Mm. And... Uh, oh, yeah. There's what year is yours? Uh, mine's an early one. It's the last of the early cable throttle ones. So I think a couple of months later, um, yeah. the E throttle came out, uh, was available to buy. And yeah, yeah, you get into those cars. It's basically, and hopefully this doesn't make the prices go up, but I mean, they're basically water cooled 993s. I mean, they really yeah. have that feel to them. They're very analog. They're very, I mean, they're just very visceral cars still. Uh, this is more of a GT car. It's not like it's it's more of a modern 911, but it's not quite the 997, 991, etc. Well, do you think um, disconnecting the front drive shafts has? I'm, I'm going to kind of lean on that as as a point has taken away that GT kind of that GT feel because now you've got a 3.6 in the back that's driven the wheel, rear wheels only. Um, does it has it changed the uh, how dynamic the car feels yeah it it feels so much lighter and it's not lighter it's just a little bit i guess maybe nimble would be the better way to put it because i'm not getting that pull from the mm. to the front wheels when it's slipping otherwise it's a very very minimal like all wheel drive system um mm. it's not something that is going to change that much of the dynamics but i noticed it this morning on our drive more than anything because as we were going into some off-camber curves, traction was 
totally different than uh, than what I was used to. <laughs> That's good though. Uh, it's good that you know you, you have that ability to have a, a more nimble 996C4S. I, I hear what you're saying as well about the, the, the 996 is a lighter car than a 993. It's more rigid. The chassis, the, the, the body frame, everything was made more rigid. Um, and I feel fortunate that I've got an early one because it is very, apart from ABS and power steering, that, that's it. And, and those were featured on a 964 as well. So I do have quite an old school feeling car. And to think yeah, they marketed this and sold it for such a price as well, you think, Jesus, they really have moved forward a lot in the last 20, 22 years. So. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I, I mean, I, on the, I'm on the daily looking for a, an early 996. I mean, I, I want a Gen 1. I want an aero kit. Uh, so, yeah, you know how it goes. It, do you know what? It's, it, it always happens. Pure luck seems to sit, have found me with mine. And uh, uh, fingers crossed, man, you'll find the same thing. It's, it's a wonderful car. I, I, can't, I can't fault mine. Uh, apart from the oil leak it's got now, which pisses me off. But, hey, every <laughs> car's got an oil leak. So it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. This, this is Porsche lifestyle, man. Take my money. Um, <laughs> okay, we've got, we've got a few more. Okay. Interesting. So, 911 Rage asks, would you know if Yakima still sells that color for the Skyrise tent? So, this Skyrise was specifically made for REI, ironically, the company that I got it from hmm. uh, at that garage sale. If they're not on the website, they might be done selling them. I do know that they were changing uh, production facilities. So, that could be the hang up. Okay. Um, but I would just it, shoot them a direct message on their Instagram. Uh, their manager is super great at getting back to people, and she could probably tell you. That's cool. No worries. Thank you so much for that. There you go. Got your Kima representative in the house. Um, okay. We've got – where is it? Do you guys use a drone? And if you do, which one? So I don't have a drone. Um, something that I am constantly looking for. Um, the the drone videos that you have seen, uh, in fact, I think maybe one or two posts ago, there was quite a video that was put out, was pure accident luck. Uh, again, Brand, I know it's it was mind blowing when this happened. Um, good story behind it. I do know it was a DJI two Phantom. Is that correct? Somebody give me a bunch of hearts. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, Big old thing. Uh, but the way that ha that the way that happened, and if you haven't seen the video, go back and watch them because they're super fun. Um, Brandon and I were out on the Oregon coast, shoot, just gonna have some fun, doing some donuts in the sand, shooting a little bit, and we're dry. He's driving his Range Rover down one side, and I'm driving my the 911 down one side, and um, all of a sudden, between us, a drone flies right through, and we're like whoa 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 what just happened and then on coming the other direction there's a mercedes sprinter van with a full-on cineflex red camera setup hanging off the roof and it goes by i'm like how did this just happen so long story short the guys recognized the car um the 911 and turned around and came back and said hey you want to shoot for a little bit until sunset and i'm like Absolutely. So we ended up with some of my favorite footage ever of the 911. Um, so yeah, there's a long answer to do we use a drone? That's, do you feel that you've been fortunate with certain things that happened in your life to get you to this point? And I only raised this because a the roof rack, uh, the, 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 the sky high tent, sorry, um, you know, and some of the opportunities you've had with travel uh sam from stg from um you know then planning to go to europe which means you've hopefully come to the uk that means yes definitely there you go we're gonna we're gonna yeah. share a drink together man my, my shout Absolutely. um and, and and the like do you feel that luck has played a chance or do you feel like you make your own opportunities um I, you know i, I don't, i'm not a big fan of luck um, or at least the term luck. Mm. I, I really think that I have been fortunate in a lot of the things that have happened in my life, but I've also done things that are, would, 
would be very uncomfortable for an average person, or at least my observation of what average the average person wants to do. Um, so I think that willingness on my part to do things that make me a little bit more uncomfortable, um, which now are just second nature to me, they're uncomfortable for other people. That's what's positioned me in those places. Um, I don't think, I mean, pretty easy example. I don't think most 911 owners would put up, even risk putting a roof tint on their car. Um, I don't think most 911 owners would risk driving their car through the ocean water, you know, on their, you know, their coast. And so I think those choices have allowed me to be in certain positions that have given me those opportunities. Um, I'm not really a big fan of average. I hear you, man. I completely understand that. You have to get involved to get somewhere. You can't dream and expect something to happen because it never does, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. dreams are great. Goals are where it's at. I mean, it's drastically different. That's um, it. You know, I, I can remember, like, dreaming of having, you know, Porsches in my life and – and then all of a sudden setting like an actual tangible goal that would say, this is what I have to do on a daily basis to achieve this. And then I would go do that. And then once I achieved it, it was like, okay, well, what's next? Um, and don't get me wrong. There's been plenty of distractions and downs and all that kind of stuff in my life, but doing the things that most people won't gives you the things that most people don't have. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there's that saying, you know, in order to be the top 10%, you have to do what the 90% won't do. Um, and I may have paraphrased that, but, you know, I, I believe that firmly as well. You know, want anything, do it. You can't win the lottery unless you buy a ticket after all. So there you go. Right. Cool. Um, okay. So uh, there was a couple of questions that just came up. One was quite good and it gives us a segue into – I've got to admit, it's one of my favorite cars as well, the Range Rover Classic. But uh, Irvington said, have you ever considered to get an SUV or off-road vehicle to camp instead of a 911? Well, in actual fact, Brock has. <laughs> let's, let's talk about your two RRCs. So there's, there's the, uh, the wheeling RRC, and then kind of see the other one right there missing its rear bumper so i've got a couple of range rover classics oh, um cool. and you know i bought those i bought the the red one at least um right after we got lucy because i could easily justify my wife's giving me the look over here i could <laughs> easily justify um she needed her own car i mean we just couldn't put her in the 911 all the time so we had to go find a car for her yeah and so she ended up getting her own Where's she at there? Oh. She ended up getting her own uh, her own car, and that's that's the red one behind us. She's wonderful, yeah. And and it's funny if anyone can, everyone can testify to this. Once you have a dog in your life, every decision is made based on a dog, you know. So <laughs> it, it's it's true though. Come on, man, you know. So it, it, it's funny though when you do it with children, it's a completely different thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I you know I hear that all the time. I hear that all the time. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, now you mentioned about the S4. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you still yeah. uh, uh, Tom O'Shea one? Good Irish name there. Do you still own the S4? And what modifications did you do to it? Um, so I've had two B5 S4s. So uh, yeah, two turbo seven hard. twin turbo. Yeah, twin turbo two sevens. Uh, amazingly great and terrible all at the same time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the first one. Um, I no longer have. That was in a little track accident that um, my wife Ooh. was in. She did a good job on that one. All four corners of the car were damaged. Well done, Sarah. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she, now she's giving you the look, by the way. Um, <laughs> and nice then, to meet you, I'm sure. And I'm not speaking to, you, to Brock ever again. I'm sorry. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> so then the second one, again, it was one of those things that just kind of fell in my lap. Um, somebody was moving, they didn't have a place to put it and they wanted to just unload it. So I bought that and that has, so tuning wise, excuse me. Um, the first right. one had, uh, it was basically a stage two car. So it was super quick. Um, mm. the second one, uh, I did exhaust down pipes, turbos, a tune, all that kind of good stuff was done. And then um, I still own, I would say about 
maybe a third of it right now. My neighbor, I keep looking over this way, guys, because my neighbor bought it from me. Um, so I still get to look at it across the street, which is good and bad because oh. it's a E5S4. You never really know what's going to happen. <laughs> well, go. luckily, it's, it's not broken yet because then you can't come back no. to and say, well, well, what's happened here then? Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, such is life. We'll see how it goes. I warned him. I warned him multiple times. I'm like, hey, it's, it's an S4. It's going to take a lot of love. But it's going to give a lot of love back. Yeah, true. Yeah. One of the people watching, uh, Ed Sheets, who is from Bold City, had a, is it Ava Silver B5S4 um, event as well? And ah, uh, he sold that better. recently. Oh, mate, I, I, I'm, I, I love the Audis. I love the B5s especially, the most timeless designed Audi ever. Even today, if that was okay. to rock up, you think that's, that's fresh. Okay. Eric Pasha from Last Era Brand, someone I interviewed about five weeks ago now. His uh, question is, craziest animals you've come across while camping in the 996? Uh, craziest animals? Um, nothing really that wild. I, I mean, there's we've got deer out here, elk out here. Um, I don't think there's really been anything. Have we had any crazy animal experiences? <laughs> Bears. <laughs> Yeah, bears at night. Like, if we don't pack our food up appropriately, we, you know, bears are a problem. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, to be fair, man. I mean, I, I, I'd probably shit myself if I encountered a bear here, you know, in, yeah, in all fairness. I don't know. I mean, they're – just stay out of their way. <laughs> it's, I mean, that's, that's how it is with most wildlife. I mean, the only ones that really want to play with you, like a toy, are the mountain lions and cougars. So everybody else just kind of wants to do their own thing. Okay, leave them alone. Maybe a little nod and a and a cheers to them. Maybe I don't know. Okay, um, wistful philosopher asks, "What was the best and what was the worst camping experience on trips and why?" He said the trip, but um, you've been on so many, so let, let's talk about it. what what comes to mind. Is like, wow, this is incredible. What comes to your mind, like, Jesus? Um, I, oh, it's tough. Like. I guess camping trips with the 996, um, the best and the worst were this were pretty much the same trip. It was uh, a drive down to Rensport Reunion. It was actually the first camp trip I did in the 911. Okay. And I hadn't really uh, – long road drive. Uh, we'd, we'd done one camp trip before that. But the long road trip was um, down to Monterey for Pebble Beach uh, or down in the Pebble Beach area there. And I – it was a last minute thing. I happened to get gifted a couple of tickets to get in mm -hmm. um, some like all access passes, which are really cool. And then the problem is, is that event is booked out a year in advance. Like you're, yeah. you're not going to, you're not going to get any hotel rooms or campsites or anything, which is great when you've got your house on your roof. Um, but then it's like finding a place. Where do I do this? Like, do I just pop a tent in somebody's like cul-de-sac on their, like in front of their driveway? Or do I try to find something out in the middle of nowhere? So it was pretty late. It was the first night for Rensport Union. Uh, it was getting pretty late and I really didn't know where I was in a camp. And I figured, you know what, I'm just going to drive down um, towards Pebble Beach. So 17 mile drive. If anybody has ever experienced that, it's one of the most beautiful places on the West Coast, probably in the world. Um, and most of the home, I would say the average home there is probably between six and $10 million. So not inexpensive, but epic views. And I rolled up to the gates cause it's this gated community. And the guy just waved me in like, <laughs> come on in. And I'm thinking, okay, well, there's a perk for driving a Porsche, even though it's a, you know, almost 18 years old, drove down 17 mile drive. And there's all these little turnouts that, uh, people can go and park and just look at the ocean. It was getting late, so I'm like, I'm just going to do it and see what happens. So I pulled over. It was late at night, 17-mile drive, popped open the tent, stayed the night on the ocean. Um, so worst part of that was the stress of being able to find a place to, to camp. Best part about that, it's probably one of the most epic camping spots on the planet. And I don't think it's ever been done before because I'm pretty sure I would have been arrested if anybody would have seen me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That is beautiful. Again, it's you have to be in it to win it. So well done with that. Right. Uh, more of a statement here. There should be a 996 camping field at Le Mans. 
next I, year when we all meet up. So I think that's an invite for next June. So you best be in uh, in France in June, and we'll, we'll do that. France, um, so there you go. Twenty four. Okay, if, who's who's got the hookup? Let's make that happen, and uh, we'll make sure a bunch of nine elevens have tents on the roof. Man, can you imagine? That would just be amazing. We 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 we'd own that place. You know, it'd be it'd be hours for the taking. Okay, um, okay, is there... right. Let's look at. There's a couple more questions here. Um, do you like the first generation KN? I do. Um, so I had a I had a turbo. Um, put an order in for a basalt black turbo when that came out, and you know it's. I will never forget my first drive in that. Uh, I was in in Central Oregon in a little town called Bend, and it's known for its roundabouts, uh, which is something that's a little bit strange here in the U.S. Yeah, I was uh, going to say I was in Miami, um, Florida State uh, in February, and I encountered one roundabout, and people were so confused. I'm like, this is the most normal oh, yeah. part of driving. Yeah, we've we've had roundabouts. We're going to get off subject here a little bit, but we've had roundabouts in Bend for probably 15 years, and people still stop. And I'm like, what are you doing? It's not like go. <laughs> but uh, so back, but back to the Cayenne. I absolutely love that vehicle. Um, driving it feels like you're driving a 996 you're just higher off the ground it i highly suggest those to people i think they're they're phenomenal yeah okay and i got no issues if it gets you into a night if it gets you into a porsche by all means do it uh, i love them i remember seeing one that was with a snorkel and a high lift kit it was before they released the trans-siberia edition of the f yeah. nine uh, of the the first edition like facelift and i thought man i'm, I'm sold i know a lot of people say well, that's a fancy Volkswagen KN, but fuck it, man. You know, it, no, the Volkswagens didn't come with a turbocharged V8, so... Ah. No, no, you could squeeze 500 horsepower out of that in no time. It was, they're unreal. <laughs> Proper. Okay. Um, money, no, no, I think, I think we've covered all the... Oh, interesting. I had a question here. It was not a question. It just says 911. Um, I agree. Yes. Yeah, I agree too. <laughs> the answer to every question ever, 9-11. Yeah. Thank you, William, for that. Um, okay. What else? I think I think we've covered all the questions, I think. Oh. You see my uh, my filming area there? Nice. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful bedroom. It, gets, it doesn't get used, to be fair, most of the time, so... There was someone who wanted to show us their Ferrari FF with a with a tent on it, which is cool. I'd love to see it. Send us a picture. I'll make sure I put it in on the. Uh, Wait a second. Uh, uh, There's somebody the who's done the Ferrari FF with a, a tent on it because if I not, know. that's been on, that's my bucket list right there. I, I got to do that. <laughs> Man, if, if you haven't, have you lived? Um, oh, here we go. Here's a good question, and probably the last one we'll do before we we do the last Q and A. How many miles do you drive a year? That's a good question, actually. Uh, last year, I did a little over 27,000. That's not bad going. I was going to think it's it was going to be more. But... Pretty... Yeah, I, and I, the reason being is, so I have the Range Rover. I, we have a, um, a convertible, a little 3 Series BMW. And then I also have an E28 M5 that I split some time um, with. You never said that. I didn't know this. Yeah, it's it's back there. Um, that's a that's a really really special car for me. I've had it for pushing eighteen years now, and it's oh, wow. uh, it was dining if you dining cars there here in the U.S. I think. Oh man, the tuning is just unreal. They they're like the specialist in America, aren't they? For yeah, they are. They are the BMW, especially the vintage cars, the uh, the classics. It's it was their development car, so it has. Every oh. bit and piece that Dynan never made for anyone uh, on it, which is good and bad for me. Uh, so, but that's <laughs> why that's why it's been twenty seven thousand miles with the the nine eleven, and it, they get split up a little bit amongst other things. Gosh, oh, see, it's you've got like the perfect three car. Uh, I'm going to call it a three car because you've got two of the same car, but three car garage there. You've got the M five, you like the original M five as well. Hey, yeah. Lucy, oh, she's beautiful. Um, you've got the, the, the 996 C4S and you've obviously got the, you know, it, it's an amazing collection of vehicles. 
I yeah. think I think someone's come up with one last question. Oh no, that's my background. Is it working? Okay. No. No, that's it. They're all done. Uh, for some reason, it flashed the same. A few people have asked about the doing a road trip in in your your uh, Range Rover, but you know we've already. Yeah, kind of I mean, all we've, those. my wife and I um, we're coming up on a th our three year wedding anniversary. We I will say that we did a uh, a three thousand no. mile road trip in the Rover. Cool. Um, we we basically went th all the way down California, almost L.A., and then um, back up through the Sierra Nevada mountains. I mean, it was pretty epic. Oh. So. That's a good one. Um, yeah, I see. A few, I mean, I'm getting a few comments, questions in here. Uh, Instagram for the M5, probably not going to happen. There's like certain things in my life I like to keep private. <laughs> um, that, That's cool, that man. Is super special to me, and I, I would never have enough content for it because I just I don't drive it like I used to. I dailyed it for 15 years, so um, it just now it just sits there and gets driven on a Sunday or something. That's uh, it's nice that you still got it. You know what I mean? So um, it's a wonderful car. Okay. That ends the Q&A section. Last thing before we close up. Now, as I mentioned to you in that uh, email, we do a quick fire set of questions. There's 14 questions to answer within two minutes. You cannot elaborate on your answers. You just have to give me the answers. Some of them are going to be slightly oh. uncomfortable. But the good thing about it is, you know, it's only in jest. So whatever you say, it's only going to be recorded forever. Um, are you happy and ready to do this? I'm ready. Good man. Okay. So two minutes starts now. The best Porsche ever. 959. Oh, good answer. Dog or cat? Yeah, exactly. Dog. <laughs> Dog. Dog. All day. Um, well, I saw your reactions to the cat, actually. What would you drive if Porsche never made a car? Uh, BMW M5. Yeah, said it as well. Last song you listened to in your car? What's that? Last song that you listened to in your car? Oh, um, it was... I think it was... She Don't Use Jelly, Flaming, Flaming Lips. <laughs> what, who was it i don't remember i can't remember what it was i think that was what it was good taste man uh best porsche color uh i'm gonna have to go with atlas gray i love it oh it's a good color as well um highway or canyon canyon porsche they never should have made I don't know. I love them all. Do I have to answer that? Oh, uh, don't be a softie. No, I, the Macan, for sure. Macan. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Schumacher or Senna? Senna. Okay. How could they improve the current 911? <laughs> Make it smaller and lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says the same thing. Uh, favorite drink? Gin and tonic. Okay. Gin and tonic. Wow. Okay. Uh, favorite modified Porsche other than your own? Uh, Roof Yellowbird. Oh, wicked car. Chinese food or Italian food? Chinese. Oh, last question. Favorite film with a Porsche in it? Oh, man. I don't even know. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I mean... Doesn't. Okay, well, you put won't fire off, man. Put McQueen in. I mean, there's still there's so many. I don't even know. Uh, Le Mans. Okay, we'll, we'll keep Le Mans. That's, yeah. that's a good, it's a good Le shout. Man. I mean, that's probably a standard for most people. Okay. No worries, man. Well, bro, that's that's come to the end of our session. So I just want to say thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it taking the time out for, for us. Guys, and uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful time with you, man. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for having me. I'm glad we reached out and made this happen. No worries, man. Uh, all the best. And uh, we'll catch up very, very soon, okay? Got to refill. Cheers, brother. Later. Bye-bye. Okay. I uh, just want to say uh, a big thank you to everyone who uh, partook in today's uh, live Q&A. Again, as always, we are going to be uh, going live again this week a couple of times with some new guests. So I will put some advertising up in due course. Also, something to bear in mind. 
we will be uh, putting this up on YouTube in a couple of weeks' time, so you'll be able to watch this. However, this video is going to be live um, for the next day. So after this, I'll put it up live. Just come back onto my page again, Ren11. If you aren't following, please click the follow button. I'll be doing this regularly with some very cool people. Uh, but again, it's nothing without you folks. So thank you so much for partaking. Uh, and if you aren't on my YouTube yet, make sure you subscribe. Bio is on the front. All the best, folks. Take care. Much love. Until next time. Bye-bye.